In this video, we're going to solve this trigonometric equation for solutions in the interval from 0 to 360 degrees. And of course, I've done quite a few of these before, and the techniques that you use on these are basically the same techniques you use when you're solving algebraic equations in one variable or quadratic equations. You apply techniques of factoring. So when you're solving a trig equation and you have different functions, in this case, you have a sine function, a cosine function. A lot easier to solve it if you only have one. You can just isolate it. In some cases, it'll be a quadratic in cosine. It could be a quadratic in sine. Or it could have a linear look in one of those functions or some others. And you simply isolate that function and use the techniques for solving those types of problems. So in this case, what we're going to do Another thing, this one has 2x, sine of 2x, and the rest are single x and x. So let's try to eliminate this. So using one of your identities tells me if you have the sine of twice an angle, that's going to be the same thing as twice the sine of just the angle and the cosine of x. So sine of 2x using double angle identity can be written as twice the sine of x, the cosine of x, and then we have minus the cosine of x. And then I can see that I can factor from this to these two terms, I can factor out a cosine. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor a negative out of this. So this will give me twice the sine of x minus 1 equal to zero. So since the right side is zero, if I'm able to factor the left side into say two factors, then I can use the zero factor theorem. If uh, I have a product of factors equal to zero, one factor could be zero or they both could be zero. So here I have a factor of cosine of x. So let's take the cosine of x out. Factor out cosine of x. So in parentheses, this will leave me with 2 sine of x minus 1. And over here, of course, I have minus 2 parentheses sine of x minus 1 equals 0. So notice here I have this factor here is common to this factor here. So let's factor that out. And that will give me 2 sine of x minus 1, and I'm left with this cosine of x here, put, put in parentheses here, cosine of x, and this was, this was taken out, so this, remember this one is to be minus 1 here, this will be minus 1. Now I have the left side factored out. One factor is 2 sine x minus 1, and the other factor is cosine of x minus 1. So either this factor, or this factor, or both factors are equal to zero since the product is zero. So just like in algebra, you have x minus one times x plus two equals zero. You set each factor equal to zero, solve for x. Well, the same sort of thing here. I take the first factor, so this will be two sine of x minus one equal to zero. And then take the second factor, set it equal to zero, cosine of x minus one equal to zero. And then you solve each of these for the function. So the first factor, I'm going to solve it for sine of x. So this will be sine of x. So sine of x, taking the minus 1 over, that will be 1, and then divide by 2. I get sine of x is equal to 1 half. And then on this one, add 1 to both sides to isolate the cosine. I get cosine of x equal to 1. So then over here, I can just from these equations, and hopefully you know these already, Hopefully you already know how to compute these out without the calculator, but sine of x equals to one half means that x is going to be 30 degrees. And that should give you 30 degrees. And then use that 30 degrees as your reference. So that means 180 minus 30 should be another answer since the sine is positive in quadrant two. So the other solution would be 150 degrees. And for the other equation right here, cosine of x equals to 1. And those are the three solutions in the interval from 0 to 360. Obviously, 
the Goldstein F360 is also one, but this interval includes zero, but doesn't include the 360 because it has parentheses here. So you don't give 360 as your solution. And also keep in mind that this is the solutions in this interval. If uh, an equation has one solution, it's going to have an infinite number because of the period of these uh, functions that you keep where uh, they repeat. Also, all you have to do is add, add a multiple of 360 to 30 degrees, add a multiple of 360 to 150, the same thing at, with zero, add a multiple of uh, 360, and you have it. Now, if you they tell you you want the answer in radians, then you could easily find the answer in degrees and multiply each of these by pi over 180 degrees and the degrees would cancel with the 30 the 150 and of course the answer would come out in terms of pi. Now when you have an exact solution like this you can also work it out on your calculator. Sometimes the instructor might tell you to get your solutions by graphing. So you would since this is set up set equal to zero just take this as your one function and graph it. And I've done something like this before. I've already entered it. So here I have the function sine of 2x minus cosine of x minus 2 sine x plus 1. So I'm going to graph it. I'm going to go to zoom first here and do a 7z trig. And you can see every, anywhere that the graph crosses the x-axis is going to be a solution. But we're only concerned from the point 0, 0 onto the right up to, three, uh, up to less than 360. So one way we can do this is do a trace here. So I trace. So here, right at the origin, I get x equal to 0, y equal to 0. So that's one solution, x equals 0. That's what we got over here from the cosine equation. And then if I just uh, move the cursor here, you see there x equal 30, y equals 0, the function 0. So this function is going to be 0 when x is 30. Have it over here on the right. So 30 degrees is another solution using this method. And then keep going with the trace. And slow down, you get close to the x-axis here. And there's the other one, 150. So 30, 150, and 0. That's what we got. And if, if you keep going, they're going to repeat. If I keep going, okay, so here it went to touch us here, obviously, at three, 360, it crosses again. But 360, again, is the re repetition of zero, to zero over here. Then if I keep going, the other ones are going to repeat. But that's the way you can do the uh, solution using the graphing method. Now, if it turns out that you don't get an exact answer, you don't get, see here, 360, 0. And you got 150, and this was 0. 30, and this was 0. That tells you it's an exact. Now, if it doesn't come out to exact, you go through here, and you slow down right before the intersection point, and it doesn't give you a 0 for the y over here, then you have to use the trace feature, the um, 0 feature here. So if I go to second, calculate, then you would use number 2 and get an approximation. And I've done some zeros like that before, or some problems like that before. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.